Hi, my name is Richard Bilderbeek and I'll be talking about using Bianca from the command line. What I'll be doing, first I'll log in into Bianca from Rackham, show it in a second. Then we're going to use all the commands that are listed on the page and then we do the type along um, and I'll show you how it looks like. So let's first log in into Bianca from Rackham. Um, so I am on Rackham now. The reason you need to log in from Rackham is because I'm not at the university now. So I need to log in into Bianca. And I have a script that does exactly that uh, with some echoes. I'm just going to use it and log in on Bianca from Rackham because I'm not at the university. So I can't do this. I'm at home. Um, I really need to use Rackham first. You can all everywhere you can log into Rackham. Um, so I'm going to do that. And notice that I have some helpful prompts because I forget stuff. Mm -hmm, password, uh -huh, two-factor authentication, 748. Mm -hmm. hmm. So this is the first step. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now I've logged in into Bianca from Rackham. And you've already seen ThinLink, which is easier. And if you're at the university, you can directly log in. Um, so I'm on Bianca now. Let's take a look at what the 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 website says uh, with the with the course material. So here we have some uh, some commands. Let's do them. So PVD present working directory. Let's do it. PVD means that I'm. It shows you the current folder you're in. It's like your um, your, like your folder where you are. Um, and if you uh, go into a subfolder, we'll make a subfolder soon, then you'll see that change. You can also do a capital P, which shows you the hardware, which folder you are on the hardware. So PVD is where you are from uh, using symbolic links, whatever those are. This is what as a user you experience with, where with dash capital P is like the bigger hierarchy you're part of, like where the hard, according to the hardware where you are. Um, as a user, you will only use PVD. LS, list the file content. Well, that's easy with LS. I see all the files here. In this case, I only see, uh, see three folders. If you do dash dash all, you get a bit more information. You also see the hidden folders, uh, hidden files and folders. Um, you can also see only the directories or whatever. Um, LS, there's a file, there's a with man ls you can get the manual of ls so if you want to find out how this exactly works you can do all of these uh, for example if you want only to see the directories you use dash dash directory but you can read all those things yourself so i'm not going to do that ls i know these are three folders i don't see any highlighting uh, on bianca uh, unlike for example this is my regular computer i already see that that, that when i do ls on a regular computer i do get some more information going to the home you see that there are some folders in blue and some files in black uh, for bianca i've not set this up i'm not sure if this is possible either uh, i assume it's possible uh, i just have not set it up uh, because i don't use it on bianca next command touch create an empty file let's do that so if you do ls we see three things uh, which all three are folders if I create touch uh, my file.txt, then I have created a file called my file.txt, and here it shows up. Uh, we'll be using that file. Uh, so the next functions are cd and make there. So let's first make a directory, and then we go into the directory, check the present directory, and then remove the directory again. So md make directory uh, my folder. Oh, make there, of course, make there, my folder. Palm, now we have a folder. If I do ls, we see this my folder. It is the same call as text files because I've not set this up, or maybe it cannot be set up, I don't know. cd, change directory, my folder. This means navigate into my folder. If I do ls, I see the content of the folder. It's empty because I've not created a file yet. Um, I can make a I can make a file here, uh, for example, this file. And if I do ls, I see that file. I'm going to remove, I'm going to keep this, I'm going to keep it in, I'm going to remove the folder. Um, so, But I'm in the folder now, you can't remove a folder where you're in, technically you can, but it's a bit weird to do that, and you'll be moved around on the file system. So I'm going to move out of this folder, 
and then I'll remove it. To move out of the folder, you see the dot dot. So it technically means you move up one folder. Um, that means that if I move up one folder, I can now see this my folder and I'm going to remove it. So there are two ways to remove a folder, rm and rmdir. And rmdir only works on removing an empty directory. So if I do rmdir on my folder, this will fail uh, because the directory is not empty. This is a very clear error message. I can remove the file from my folder. If you do use my folder slash and then the name of the file, you can remove it. Note that if you use tap, it auto completes. It's not that I type super fast, it just auto completes it. So now I've removed the file in that folder. And if I now remove my folder as a directory, as a folder, then it's gone. So that is how you create a folder. Create an empty file, change directory, make the directory, and then remove the empty directory. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove, I already removed the file. I'm going to remove a folder as well. Uh, and I'm going to use copy and move uh, to in that process. So taking a look at what I have now, I use clear to, to clear up all the, the, the clutter. What I'm going to do, I'm going to move my file. I, I will copy this first. Let's do that first. Copy my file to my copy.txt. This is how you copy a file with CP, copy, brilliant name. Um, I'm going to use make a folder again called my folder brilliant name. If I do ls ls here I see the folder here I see my file here I see my copy. Um, now I'm going to move this file into my folder, which uses mv, which is move move my copy into my folder my folder. So if you use autocomplete, like, like here, if you use autocomplete, you can't do it with tab because there are three options you can choose from. So if you use an F, then there will be two copies, two things to choose from left, which is my file or my folder. If you use O with tab, it will autocomplete now. So now I've moved the file called mycopy.txt into my folder. Let's double check. If I do LS, I see that my file is there. My folder is there, but the file my copy is not there. If I go into my folder and take a look there, ah, there it is. So we indeed really moved this. I move up again one folder and to take a look to in my now I'm back in my home folder. Here we see pbd slash home slash reach. That's my home folder. Great. Now it's time to remove that folder. Um, and I'm what I want to remove is this folder called my folder. So let's do remove my folder just to see what happens because you can't do this. Bam. Here it says cannot remove my folder because it's a directory. We know that remove there doesn't work on when a directory is not empty. Uh, rm can work if it on a directory if you use dash capital R, a uh, uh, little r. Um, and then we'll complain as well. No, it won't complain. This is great. I just removed my folder. Uh, of course, this dash r is, is a dangerous command. Nothing or a few things will stop you from removing everything, right? So if you use remove dash r, be careful. So this means I've covered all these commands uh, except SCP, which is a secure remote copy. Uh, that's because it's part of file transfer. I'm not going to talk about that now. Uh, that's an, another part of this course. Um, let's do some working with files and some file properties, uh, except that I won't be compressing files, but I will create a file, print it on screen, edit the file a bit, get some info about the command, already used that, and print something on screen. So let's do that. Um, let's do a clear and take a look. So here we have my file.txt. Let's print that content. Cut my file.txt. And here we see that the file is empty. Um, that's a bit that's a bit dull. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some text to my file. And for that I'm going to use uh, the, the command echo. So with echo you can put text on screen. And if you do uh, the, 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 the greater than sign, this symbol, you can create a file and make it that make it the text hello as a content. 
Whereas if you do this twice, it will append. So if I do hello and I do world, that's a bit canonical. Now we have a file that has two lines, one with hello and one with world. Now we can take a look at my file using cat again. And here we see that we indeed have a file as we expected. Um, this is a bit uh, short still. Um, let's say we want to print the, f let's say imagine it to be a bigger file than with head until you can print the first and the last part. So if I do head, my file, this is the same as cat, except we'll print the top lines. Um, if we really only want to see the top line, you use dash n, dash one, dash n, one, which means show the one top line. Tail works exactly the same, except it starts from the bottom. Uh, by default, it shows, I think, 20 lines. So for a file that has only two, uh, you really use dash n1 to show either the complete first line or the complete last line. Uh, but for bigger files, this is definitely useful. Um, let's say you wanna, let's say it's a big file you wanna browse through, then you can use less. Uh, less, uh, 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 um, less is, is a bit like file. You can now scroll through a file and view it better. Uh, this is a bit too small, but you definitely can use less uh, to, 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 to browse a bigger file. So this, it looks a bit weird with these squiggles maybe for you, but it indicates, well, there's nothing more there. And you have to use Q, so I press Q now to end this. So that's less, you can also use more if you like to, or you can use Vim if you like to, or you can use Nano um, to edit files. Um, so, so maybe you wanna do that. Here, uh, and, and now, now we have a file we can really scroll through. And now we can also show less better. So less my file. Here we can now scroll through a file, usually can't do that. And now we can again use head my file shows you the top. Here you see it's, it's apparently 10 lines by default. If you do tail my file, now we get the, the, the last part. So that was about showing the head, the tail, uh, browse it and showing the file. Um, I'm not gonna compress or extract files. You can use Stack Overflow for that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the file permissions. And for that, I'll be creating a script to actually run it. Um, um, maybe I use man first, because man gives you all these options that you are maybe unaware of. So man is short for manual. And one of my favorite things uh, to do is, uh, is you, is to look up those funky, fancy commands. So if you do man cat, cat was to show a file. Let's just use it, cat my file. Here and now I see the content of cat. I can scroll up. And if I wanna see the manual of cat, then you can see it all here. Th and that's, f that's nice that most of these Linux things have a, uh, have a manual. Uh, my favorite is to use dash dash number so these two are equivalent. You can use, if you want to cat, if you want to show the line numbers when using cat, you can either use dash n or dash dash numbers to number all the output lines. We're going to use this both just to make, just to show uh, that, that I'm, I'm right. So I use either dash n to show the file. So apparently it's 30 files now or use dash dash number. This is exactly the same. You don't even see the difference. Um, this is the shorthand, this is the full out version. So using the manual to find some, some fun things, sometimes it's super long and it does expectedly much, unexpectedly much, so but that's where the manual is for. So last thing, I'm gonna create an executable. Um, and I'm gonna do that from scratch. I'm gonna remove my files because I don't need it anymore. I'm going to create a file called myscript.sh. So sh means usually bash or shell script. Um, I'm going to use the, the old school version, um, the way to do it. So I'm going to echo, which means, so if you print this to screen, you can do it using echo. But you can say, all right, send that output to myscript.sh. And then I'm going to echo something like, um, 
Echo, hello world, brilliant. I'm gonna append that, so I need two of these. And now I've created a script file. You can also use nano or vim, whatever you like. But here we have a nice script file, which is um, the first line is the shebang, uh, indicating it's a bash file. And then it prints hello world. And if I want to run that script, uh, you can't. So usually you run a script like this, my script dot sh with dot slash, which means simply here. It says permission denied. Uh, that's because we didn't give it right to be an executable. To do that, you use two mods. So change uh, modifiers. Um, dot plus x means add executable rights. And you could use minus x to remove that. But first we're gonna check if we can now run my script. Bam, you can run my script, that's great. Um, now I'm gonna remove the executable right and now I can't run my script anymore. So that's why I use tumult4 uh, to make scripts executable, but I'll also show later how you can uh, protect a folder from being deleted. So that's the first part. Uh, I just described all the most important commands. Uh, let's do this type along. Um, navigating you can check the path to your home folder. So your home folder, you go there, let, let's start from clean, see the squiggle. So on an English keyboard, it's at the top left, this squiggle, which means always go to the home folder. Uh, PVD, present working directory. So this is how I experience uh, the working directory I am, uh, but if you use the hardware with dash p, apparently I'm not at home slash reshell, I'm apparently in the folder caster slash project slash home slash reshell. Um, that's because caster is this file storage, is a file storage system used for Bianca. Um, but I'm given the illusion that I'm, that I'm just in a regular home folder. I'm not, but usually I don't care about where I am on the hardware. But be, are you, when you are a system administrator, then you do care. Um, for most users, this is all you need to know. All right, uh, the answer is correct. Um, here they use dollar user to indicate who's the user. You can actually echo that if you really want, that echo, dot echo user. You can see that my user is Richel. You can already see that at this part. You can also see that my project is this. I think we can also, ah, you can't see that. Oh no, well then. Uh, but this is the project I'm working on. Uh, I'm part of apparently. Check the path to your project. This is the next thing, cd slash project, cd, so, so it's clear and let's do it cleanly. Check the path to your project, or cd slash proy. So this uh, regular slash means from the ultimate root folder project. Where we can go the, to the ultimate root folder like this, and then we can see all the, the root folders as at the top level folder. Um, we can use cd slash proy to always go into the proy folder, which is here. But you can also go to the root folder and do cd proy from there. So this is like the absolute path, uh, where this is a relative path. So you can only go into the proy folder at this exact absolute path if you're in the root folder like I did here. All right, so that's a bit of a sidetrack. So, but uh, let's say I go into the home folder. Now I do CD proy. This will always work. I'm now in the proy folder. If I do PBD, I see I am indeed in the proy folder. And if I now took look at the hardware where I am really on the hardware PBD slash P, then even there, I'm in the proy folder. However, um, if I go into the actual project folder that I'm a member of, I need to go into the sense the up folder. So, so this is the folder I work in. This is my project. Uh, I just copy pasted it. You can copy paste from a terminal. Uh, on Linux is Ctrl Shift C and Ctrl Shift V, not regular Ctrl C, Ctrl V, but Ctrl Shift C, Ctrl Shift V to copy paste. And um, so this apparently is my main project folder. You see some stuff. If I do so PBD, I get the present working directory where I feel I am. 
if I do PVD capital P, then you see that I'm actually on the hardware in a completely different folder. And this is actually a very, you would say, very general folder here. Uh, that's because on Bianca everyone has his or her own uh, separate hardware node. So every user of Bianca will have this same hardware folder, but they do work on different, because they work on different uh, Bianca servers. And so it's, everything is isolated. So there doesn't need to be like a unique folder name here. No, I am already unique as in working on this uh, piece of hardware. So that's just a fun fact about how Bianca works to be uh, privately secu to be secure. All right, uh, we're going to create an empty file, show it exists and delete it. Well, I already did that. I'll just do it again. Um, I do this in the home folder and, and I'm going to clear. So I'm in the home folder now. Uh, we're going to well, touch my file.txt, brilliant, ls. There we have it. And we're going to remove my underscore file. Bam, ls, it's deleted. That's a type along. Create a simple script. Um, well, I just did that, uh, we're going to do it again. So I'm going to copy with Ctrl C, I'm going to paste Ctrl Shift V because it's a terminal. Um, copy with Ctrl C, Ctrl Shift V because it's a terminal. I'm going to add to mod plus X my script. Um, mm -hmm. uh, mod. Let's, let's not make a typo. And then run my script. Yeah, this is a bit, uh, and here we have the, the script being run. And I'm going to remove my script. And there it is, it's gone. The terminal and the GUI are your friends. Yeah, so if you use ThinLink to log in, then you can see your folders uh, and you can copy paste it. Because I'm not on the university, I can't show it, so I won't do that here. The last section is to use Tumult to protect important files. And this type of long, let's uh, let's do it here. Uh, because we've used Gmod to make stuff uh, um, executable, here we're going to use Gmod to protect files in a data folder. So I'm going to start from uh, yeah, start from clean. So I'm going to make a folder. Don't delete me. Then I'm going to create a file there called Please Let Me Live. Bam. Then I'm going to remove the writing rights for don't delete me which means that you can't write there anymore uh, the capital the capital R means recursively so for all files in that folder so all files in that folder don't have writing rights and the dash the capital R means uh, recursively so all files in that folder we're gonna try to remove that folder now so let's first do a um, remove don't delete me that will give the error that it's a directory so I'm going to use dash R um, uh, to do recursively then it asks me a question I'm going to say yes yes but I'm not allowed to do this uh, that's because I've removed all the writing rights to everything in that folder so I do need to add the right to write again and now I can really remove everything again. This is how you protect your data. Um, yeah, you can use some aliases on your desktop, and, and a lot of people do that. Um, so I can't show you my desktop when I use it with ThinLink because I'm not at the university. But I can, I can make these shortcuts as well. I'll probably only make the first one. So let's clean up, clear. So when I do ls, I see a folder called desktop. And this is really what's at the, well, at your desktop. So on the Linux, it looks like, for me, it looks like this, but I have a different uh, Linux distribution than used on Bianca. But if I put stuff there, um, uh, like here, if I put a file here, this folder is called the, the desktop folder. So these, for example, there are four uh, links. I could show that by showing my desktop folder on my local computer. I, I won't do that, but you could. On Bianca, if you're logged in with ThinLink, you also get that fancy desktop. 
and we can make some shortcuts there. You can make the shortcuts everywhere, of course, but um, um, we'll just follow the instructions. So here it says you can, um, so it uses PROI as a shortcut. Um, I'm, I'm going to skip that step. I'm just going to make it directly. So I'm going to copy paste that stuff. Uh, clear, unless I'm on the desktop now, you see, oh, there's already a no backup PROI and WARF. Let's remove PROI and recreate it. Ah, mm -hmm. So let's create a shortcut and I'll call it PROI2 which uses ln, which means link, dash, ash, dash, s, means symbolic. And I'm just going to link to proi slash send to it up, proi2. So that means on my desktop, I will now have a symbolic link called proi2. And if I go into proi2, I will see exactly the same thing as going into this folder. And I'm going to show you that as well. So I'm going to copy paste this already. First, I go into PROI2. This is what we see if we go into PROI2. Um, now we're going to go into the, the, the absolute path. And here we see the same thing. So that concludes my video. You can, Of course, you can make all these other things. So that concludes this video of the command line intro of Bianca. I wish you a very good day. Bye.